Welcome back to the Unknown Angler. Today we're going to do a craft fur dubbing brush minnow. First of all, we're going to make the craft fur dubbing brush. I like to use the uh, Extra Select Craft Fur by Hairline, uh, and I also like to cut everything up first. Uh, the first thing I do is take one of their strips and break it into nine separate pieces. I build myself a little jig out of a piece of wood. Uh, and I believe it's one and nine sixteenths uh, measured so that I can cut the sheet into uh, nine pieces. When you do this, cut very shallow. You won't cut in the hair. You won't cut any of the hair off. Uh, you cut it into nice little squares. Each one of those squares is equivalent to uh, about one fly uh, if you were just going to tie it on a fly. <clears throat> we're going to use about three of them for the dubbing brush I'm going to make. I also use the material holder uh, from Hairline. Uh, to hold the material after I've cut it. I like to cut all the material out first and pull all the under fur out from under it so that uh, I have everything prepared in, in, the, in the, before I actually start uh, doing the dubbing brush. This allows me to uh, put everything on the dubbing brush and uh, do it all at one time instead of stopping to cut things up uh, as you're making it. Uh, the next thing we're going to use is um, EP fiber. Uh, now the one thing about the EP fiber is you notice I'm using a cat brush to comb out all the EP fibers. Uh, if you comb them out ahead of time, it really helps <clears throat> in distributing it evenly across the board. Uh, I have a new Oasis dubbing brush maker. I uh, knew I've had it about six months and uh, it's a great little tool. Love it. Uh, I don't have anything to, you know, rank it against, mainly because this is the only one I've ever used and the only one I have, but uh, it works great. <clears throat> I will tell you that it does take uh, a little bit more time and care to make a dubbing brush than you would think. Um, I've probably made 20 or 30 uh, in order to prepare for this video. Uh, you're not going to make your first one and have it come out perfect. It's just like fly tying. Uh, the first one you make, you're probably going to throw out. I threw quite a few out before I started getting the hang of it. So as fast as I'm making this and as easy as it looks to do, uh, it's proportion and uh, it's the ability to figure out exactly what you need to do in order to make a good dubbing brush. Uh, the only The only hints I can give you is don't overdo. Now, the last piece I was putting on there was Ripple Ice. Uh, that's for the flash, and you can use as much or as little of that as you want, depending on how much you want to flash out uh, the minnow. Um, and then I take the longest fibers uh, for the craft fur. <clears throat> I place them going up, and I also place them going back. So I place them in both directions on the brush, um, and I place the, the back end in the middle of the brush. Uh, I lay the EP fiber down first. Uh, that's, uh, that gives you a good base. And also when you spin it, it allows the, um, the craft fur to be free. So it frees itself up around it and it doesn't all clump together. Uh, I do also use dubbing wax uh, to uh, make sure everything stays on right or actually sticks itself together. And then the first thing I do is I just set up both ends. And if you notice, I haven't taken the block away yet. Uh, if I took the block away right now, everything would fall off. I'm going to spin quite a bit in both directions before I take the block. And as you can see, it didn't even turn when I removed the, uh, the piece of wood. Now I'm going to spin like crazy <clears throat> and then go in the opposite direction with the opposite side. That's the nice thing about the Oasis uh, dubbing brush maker. It really uh, does a nice job. Now, I'm going to pick this out multiple times for the first set of spins. I'm going to go through and pick it out with a dubbing needle. Um, if I use the, uh, the cat brush on it here, I will use it very, very lightly because I have that, that I'm not done spinning the brush, and you need to spin the brush probably three times and actually take <clears throat> the cap brush and brush it out multiple times too. 
So you don't want to over brush it and start pulling fibers out before you're done spinning. Now if you watch, I'm just going to really, really spin this. By the way, this took about, um, probably takes 15 to 20 minutes to make a brush. Obviously I'm running this in fast speed, so you can, uh, you don't have to sit there and watch me agonizingly go through and uh, try to make the brush. But it only takes about 15 to 20 minutes and you get about four flies out of each brush. <coughs> You can get really aggressive with the uh, with the brush uh, as you go through and actually uh, spin it more. Uh, you need to spin it a lot. Uh, you once again, you need to make a bunch of these brushes before you actually start making them um, with any uh, regularity and 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 make them nice. You get a feel for how much you need to spin them and how much <clears throat> tightness you need to get out of them. That's a good tight brush there. Uh, that's going to make a, a nice fly. So instead of making two videos here, I decided to make one and I'm going to go right on uh, and start making the fly. Starting out with the number two watt, a little ultra thread on it. I'm going to use one of those squares of the crafter, add a little bit of flash to it, a little flash boo, about three pieces on either side. Then I'm going to take the major brush <coughs> that I just made, I'm going to tie that in right at the tip. I'm going to pull everything back like you're tying a wet fly. Just keep stroking everything back as you're wrapping it around. And I'm going to wrap oh, probably two thirds of the hook and leave about a third at the front and then tie it off. Now it looks like it's all bunched together. It is, um, but it's not too bunched together. You'll be able to get in there with a dubbing needle and just pick it out or use the cat brush. Either one will work just fine. Actually, I'm using an eyebrow brush on this. Fooled myself on that one too. So just comb it out with an eyebrow brush or a pet fur brush or a dubbing needle uh, and just pull everything back. You notice I have a white craft fur, but I'm using chartreuse EP fiber. And then I made another EP fiber, just an EP fiber brush for the head. I'm gonna mount the eyes on this. I don't want all that craft fur all the way up to the top. So I'm just using a, about a third of the hook shank with EP fiber. I'm going to pick that out too. That's what I'm going to put the eyes on with. And um, I'm going to glue the eyes right onto the EP fiber uh, with some epoxy. Create a nice neat head. Just do a whip finish on the head. <clears throat> Some UV epoxy. The reason I do that before I put the eyes on is because what I'm going to do is use a thicker UV epoxy, just a small drop of it, put the eye on and then hit it with the UV light to glue it down. I'm going to flip it over, do the exact same thing on the other side, glue an eye down with the UV epoxy again, and then I'm going to just put an overcoat of UV epoxy right in between the two eyes, and that's the thin stuff. So I use the thick and the thin. And now I'm going to just basically go right over the top of the eyes, all the way to the all the way to the, the head and coat that with UV epoxy too. Yeah, like three or four layers of UV epoxy. And you know what? After fishing this for a couple of hours and having a couple of fish hit it, you probably even might lose an eye. You won't think you would because, man, that UV epoxy is really coated all over the top of them. But flies have a, a way of disintegrating on you. So that's it. See you next time.